It's still the breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Thanks for staying with us uh, this Friday morning. We have Jide Johnson joining the conversation. Jide, thank you so much for being part of the show. Merci. See you long time, long time, no see. Good morning, good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you as well as them. Okay. Uh, let's get straight to it. We have the punch now. 20.52% inflation. Economic crisis, job losses worsen, and food prices soar. That's on the punch newspaper, uh, boldly written. Nasima worries over increasing prices, says companies face tougher times, and one couldn't agree less. Inflation spike will throw more Nigerians into poverty, says uh, the LCCI. Another caption says Nigeria Morocco begins 5,600 kilometer gas pipeline project. ICPC uncovers 400 billion naira fraud in 2021 and 2022 budget. And federal government suspends third airlines as aviation crisis persists. Makinde Udom led Atiku's 326 member campaign team. And uh, vote president who won't compromise. Jonathan advises youth, uh, that's uh, former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And just quickly, you find appointment of Supreme Court Justice 40, says SEN. And Lagos impounds 4,694 Kada convicts, 1,490 offenders. That's the much we can take this morning on the punch. Moving over to the nation, we have uh, these headlines. The paper uh, keeping in its tradition uh, of, in recent weeks of um, covering the uh, what it calls the PDP crisis. Um, nothing much on APC, so uh, the front page of the nation, the big one there. But a judge, why Atiku may lose next year's poll. But a judge, why Atiku may lose next year's poll. The writers to that, no justification for IU to remain in office. Tambwa leads 326 man campaign council. Wike Makinde, Dr. Pesi Imoke, leader listed as members. Uh, we would hear, I'm sure, in his song what Wiki has to say about that <laughs> very soon. All right, food costs, falling narrow value, push inflation to 20.52%. And you're wondering if it can get any worse. Security Council recommends not force ban. Uh, we have some of those stories on the front page. Move quickly to the next one. Well, on the Daily Trust newspaper, inflation surge ravaging economies across Africa, not just Nigeria, as Nigeria in, Nigeria's increase to 17-year high. Ghana, Malawi, Rwanda struggle with local currency. Uh, complementary policies needed to boost food production, that's what experts are saying. Presidency, Tunubu Atiku kicks us or be leads in the NOI polls. <laughs> we talked about that. Doesn't kill as ESWAP Boko Haram terrorist clash in Bornu. Nigeria confers citizenship on 286 foreigners. Uh, it's quite interesting. Before the want of time, we move away from the Daily Trust. All right, and uh, we'll bring in Jide Johnson very quickly at this point as well to uh, give us uh, his expert analysis as always. Um, Jide, welcome and glad to have you once again. The, the, the issue, the situation in the People's Democratic Party has been given very, very wide coverage by the nation newspaper, so we'll start there. Uh, we're hearing that the campaign council has been constituted. Uh, Tamba will lead that. Mark and Wike, Dr. C. Moke are listed as members. Do you expect that uh, um, <laughs> Wike will fall in line uh, and take up his appointment mm -hmm. as a member of the campaign council? Well, what do you think should be the headline of that story, the, the composition of the National Campaign Committee, or the opinion of what they do with respect to issues relating to the national chairman of the party. In the course of this week, I was fortunate to be a panelist in the discussion by the Lagos Council of Nigerian Union of Journalists talking about the 23 election. I think the media has a responsibility, a responsibility to understand that we must bestow on the Nigerian political space, providing them with, with we must bestow good leadership by providing them 
informed, not John Dice's opinion, so as they can take informed decision. With respect to Wiki, whether Wiki would take um, that appointment, one of the things we must understand is that politicians being put here, they can fight and fight and fight in the public domain, but when they get into the private domain, they know how to resolve their issues. They will eat together. And we've seen many, many videos and many footage that have emerged from players and actors in different parties who will publicly disagree. And in the cool of the day, when they are relaxing, they will be throwing jabs, jokes at one another. Let's wait and see, but I'm sure Wiki is PDP true and true. Uh, we have seen, we thought that the issue has to do with the picking of the presidential candidate, but it has become clearer by the day and by the night that the issue is, a, is around the national, the position of the national chairman of the party, um, to the extent that even the governors of your state, when PDP hosted them, um, when the Oyo Southwest Caucus hosted the presidential delegation of their party, it was loud and clear that what they are talking about is about the chairmanship, the issue with the president, the vice president. That decisions have been taken and we have, they have gotten over other over that What I would just say is that let's wait and see um, how these things unfold as the campaign begins on the 28th of December. Well, um, let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper and also the punch. It talks about economic crisis, inflation, but it might not just be limited to Nigeria, it cuts across Africa, and you know, local currencies are suffering. And experts are saying there's need for, you know, efficiency in food production. Your thoughts exactly? What's going on with Africa? If you look at Maslow's hierarchies of need, which he used to explain the need of human beings. The basic needs, the first level of the needs are physiological needs, food, food, water, shelter, and any other form of relaxation. Now, once you take care of every nation that has developed and that has developed and that is developing, the basic thing they first conquer is hunger. Once you conquer hunger, once you reduce the prices that people spend on subsistence for them to survive, then you have created a platform through which people can save money. Saving is the lowest form of investment. However, in Nigeria and in most part of Africa, we spend a larger percentage of our income, of our disposable income, after government have removed their taxes and their fines for those that are being on, on feeding and commuting us in one place to the other. The inflation is a global problem, no doubt, it's, which is a byproduct of what happened with the lockdown because no economy was productive for almost throughout the year 2020. However, nations have taken steps. The United States of America, the presidency and the, and, and, and the Congress took a decision to come up with a bill which is called the Inflation Reduction Act. Nations take constructive steps to address this issue. The question you ask ourselves is, the, have we taken constructive steps to address this issue? All you need to do is for you to go to the market and buy things. But you know these people are far from reality. They don't go to the market. The senators don't go to the market. The House of Rep members don't go to the market. The House of Assembly members don't go to the market. The president does not go to the market. The governors don't go to the market. Even the civil servant, the topmost one amongst them, the permanent secretaries and heads of ministries, department, they don't go to the market you and I go to. So they don't face, they are far away from the reality that people are going through. So in essence, it is business as usual. So 
when you have inflation rate at double digit, 20.552%. That's 2.5. Inflation rate is not is not even is not even in, 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 in fractions, it's 2.52. That's the rate of the inflation. Then the economy is is is, is already collapsed because one, it affects production, two, it affects subsistence, three. It affects the health of the of the entire nation of the, of everyone that is involved in that in that economy. So to survive becomes pretty difficult. And one but, but, government but, is not seeing anything. About. I mean, um, Jide Johnson, if um, we say that you know there's a continuous increase in the prices of food prices, I mean global increase, inflation uh, in food prices. That's what is affecting us as a country, you know, in terms of, because if you look at food items, they're on the high, almost everything consumable is actually on the high. Should we be, um, you know, as a country be in this mix, especially where once upon a time, you know, we were very big on production, especially agriculture and it sustained us because what it means right now is that we're not even able to produce what we can consume, not to even talk about exporting. So we're therefore reliant on imports. And so should we be in this mix? I mean, isn't it embarrassing that we're saying that the continuous inflation, global inflation or increase in the prices of you know, food is affecting us as once upon a time, you know, producers of... Agriculture used to be the mainstay of the Nigerian economy, contributing over 70% to our foreign exchange annual. The question we ask is, when government these days want to pride themselves as working, they say um, they are built infrastructure. And I ask them, are people going to eat roots? Is there roots or buildings that is going to sustain people? If you ask governors across the state, what critical investment have they made in agriculture? to ensure that the people are fed. You see, it's a man that is fed that can think. An hungry man cannot think. Innovations, ideas, creative ideas, cannot come from someone that is not sustained. And we have not made critical investment in agriculture. Fortunately for us, we have the best, the most arable land you can ever think of. There's no natural resources to the point that if you go under our land, there's no natural resources you are looking for in the world that you will not see a fraction, at least a fraction in Nigeria. There's not. However, and unfortunately, we are importing food from a nation that is blessed with natural resources, that has land resources. That's minerals because people we are put in leadership don't understand that food security is the first step to national security. They don't understand that. All oh, what they parade is that we have constructed roads, we have built this, we have built that, we have done that. And but but that's also important. Those. That's also very important, you know, to food production. It's important, but it is not critical. It's important, but it is not critical. It's important. It's, no, there's no doubt about that. In fact, it's the basic public governance. You can't count constructing rules. It's like telling your children that I'm, because I'm sending you to school, it's an achievement. There are roles and there are responsibilities. It's, it's like providing food for your children and coming out in the public to me to say, okay, I, I'm, a, I'm a responsible parent. I provided food for my children. I send them to school. What would the community do to you? All right, Jimmy Johnson, what, we, we, have to, we have to go. I wish we had time to ask you about the uh, ASU latest on ASU, of course, the industrial court hearing for our government suit today. Uh, can you just say one sentence on that? Because I know that is of interest to you. Well, just a sentence. Let's, I, I hope the court will be bold and will be decisive in taking a decision in the overall interest 
of the Nigerian student, not right. picking sides, but looking at the issue thoroughly and uh, administering justice in a way that will resolve this unending crisis. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. We have to go. Have I appreciate your time, Jenny Johnson, have a wonderful time. <laughs> senior lecturer yeah. at the Nigerian Institute of Thank Journalism. You, we appreciate your time and, of course, uh, uh, your expert analysis. So we'll be right back looking at what is going on. Uh, with the 2023 elections and allegations by uh, the Conference of United Political Parties, CUPP, saying that uh, the All Progressives Congress has a grand plan, a sinister plan to hijack and rig Nigeria's 23, uh, 2023 elections. And Bessie Niger, the uh, INEC has already responded to this. So we'll talk about this when we come back. Please stay with us. A bit tongue tied there.